the way that God has created our minds, we've got the best computer in the world right, right inside here. But we start creating an expectation on what we feed ourselves with. And let me tell you, the enemy is going to deceive you and deceive your children. And what you agree upon is going to become your reality. the higher life. My name is Jenny Rabbit and I'm so excited about this program, especially the fact that you are part of it with us here in the studio. Do you know the Word of God is so powerful when it's alive in the heart of a believer. Why? Because when we believe the Word, when we speak the Word and we apply it to our lives, it changes everything about us. In fact, the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 that we must be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And when we put on the full armor of God, we are able to stand against the tactics of the enemy. We can stand against his strategies and we can stand against deceit and live in the full victory that Jesus won for us on the cross. Now, today and in the programs that follow in, we are going to be speaking about the armor of God. And I have with me a group of friends that are going to help us take the truth of God's word in a way that we can practically apply to our lives. Won't you welcome my friends with me? We have from Real Woman, Real Life, Tracy Treadray. <laughs> Woman of Vision Ministry, T.T. Goro. <laughs> Lady Rose Magazine and Women's Ministry, Linda Shooter. <laughs> Tamim International Ministries, Ankia van der Merwe. On today's program, we're going to be dealing with the first part of the Helmet of Salvation. Now, this is a part of your spiritual armor you need to pay attention to. Won't you come with me now as we dig into the Word of God and find out more about the truth concerning your Helmet of Salvation. <laughs> Well, here we are ready to get into the richness of God's Word. And ladies, we have had such an amazing journey. We really have concerning the armor of God. And here we are talking about the helmet of salvation. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the Word of God. Now, I can see in one breath, we've got the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I actually find whenever we speak about the armor of God, really, they are interlinked. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like our salvation, or when we talk about aspects of the Spirit in the Word, everything works together. Grace and faith are married together. Every part of the word is married together. You can't really have one without the other. Even though we've highlighted on the different things, you're going to find how when we speak about the helmet of salvation as well as a sword of the spirit and even praying in the spirit are so completely interlinked. So we're going to throw this right in now. We're going to our Roman soldier as always. The reason why we want to always put emphasis on what the Roman soldier looked like because Paul did that. He did that for a purpose. And we find all the way through scripture, even with Abraham, when God gave Abraham a promise, he gave him something to see so that Abraham could hold on to that truth and never let it go. When you have a mental picture of a promise of God or a principle that he has in his word for you, you will see it, you hold on to it, and your faith will be built on it. And that's what we've been doing over this whole series on the armor of God. So we have a mental picture of the helmet as well. The helmet is something that really stood out Trace, remember how we spoke about the belt of truth? Yes. And you brought in the picture of how noticeable it is. Right. Let's talk about the helmet too. 
Well, the, the whole armor is noticeable, of course. But now spe focusing specifically on the, the helmet itself, it was made of bronze and right. it was absolutely beautiful. It was a beautiful piece of the armor and it was the last piece of the armor that the soldier would put on before running into battle. Good. Which is interesting. Yes. But we'll probably get into that later. Now, obviously, what does a helmet do, ladies? What, what is the purpose of the helmet? It's to protect your... Your mind. head, yes. to protect your physical head. Yes, yes. Now, take this picture in your mind of a melon and get a hammer and smash that, 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 lem that melon. What's going to happen to the melon? It explodes. It explodes, of course. Now put a bronze armor around that melon, take the same hammer, try smash the melon. Is the melon protected? Absolutely. Of course. Now, that is exactly what the armor of God does in this instance with the, the helmet of salvation. It protects the entire mind but it protects your senses. And mm. this is what I love about the, the, this specific piece of armor. It protects your eyes, it protects your ears, it protects your mouth, it protects your senses. But this piece of armor was beautiful. Mm. It was very distinguishable. And sometimes, in some cases where I read, they said that the, the helmet actually had an inscription on it right on the forehead, and, or not on the forehead, but on the forehead area. And the inscription was the, arm, the army that you belong to. Ha, very good, very good. And and isn't it amazing that the scripture actually says that God marks us on our foreheads. Yes. So on our armor, it actually states who we belong to. And you know, Tracy, like you said, it's so amazing that even in Matthew 4, it says that our eyes, which is part of our senses, is the lamp of our body. That's and if good. that is protected, whatever we see, it fills our body. And it says, yeah, and, and, and maybe we should just read it together. It says in Matthew 4, uh, um, Matthew 6, verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. Hmm. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Whoa. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. So we have got an armor on us that protects even what we see. Okay, so we, we get in a bit of a pattern here. We know that it's got an inscription to say who we belong to. And now it also covers the senses of what we see, obviously, as well. What we hear. What we hear. And there's so much we can say about that. What is protecting us? What is protecting what we see and what we hear? It's the word. The word. It's all about the word again. It's come back to the word again. Now, there's something that, that I've realized, and I know even if you look into the whole study, the practical study of how the mind works, do you remember the mind is the control center of our lives? I mean, that is a proven scientific fact. It's this is everything. In fact, we get the information from our senses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then our mind processes that information. It'll affect the way we think, the way we see things. It affects our emotions. Yes. Yes. Every part of yes. us is affected by what we take in in our senses. Yes. Now, this can be really, really dangerous. And I want to visit this place of even the thoughts that yes. we have. Because what I see is going to trigger off certain thoughts inside of my mind, right? Yes. And what I hear, again, it's going to feed a certain type of thought pattern. Yes. Now, let's go on negative thoughts. Yes. I, I want to go there because we're going to swing it into the positive on how the armor is going to... But how would you know if you... you don't, you're not going to want the protection if you don't realize there's something to protect. Yes. So let's just see the enemy strategies because we learned we have to be aware of what our enemy strategies are. That's very clear in the Word of God. You have to be on the lookout. Jesus said, be constantly on the lookout. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a reason why you can be offended, one reason why you can be tripped up, a reason why you can be set off course. Yeah. So constantly be on the lookout for the strategy of the enemy, but... Let's speak specifically now about the things I see, the things I hear, and the thought processes that need protection. Tracy, the thoughts that come into our minds, sure. what happens? Well, I think we've got, to, we've got to remember this fact. Whatever we put into our, through our senses stays there forever. Hmm. The way that God has created our minds, we've got the best computer in the world right, right inside here. Right. So every single thing from the time you are born is stored in your memory. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, thank the Lord for His goodness and through the, His Word, our mind can be transformed. But that when we understand the fact that our mind 
is like a sponge that absorbs absolutely everything. We have got to be so careful with what we put in it. Exactly. So let's take an example of watching a, a movie we shouldn't be watching. And you all know what I'm talking about, right? Say it's a really good movie and you don't realize there's that part in the movie that just suddenly jumps up. Okay, so what do you do when that happens? Practically, let's talk practically Come about on. what you yes. do when that happens. Do you just turn your back slightly, mm -hmm. or do you just close your eyes, or do you just go la 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 and we went to go watch a movie that we knew wasn't exactly good. Okay, so don't follow my actions. But it was psychology, <laughs> so there was a reason behind it. And we all took a pillowcase with us. And when it came to that part in the movie that we knew was not good, we all took the pillowcase out, we put it over our head, and we went, we can't yell, we can't yell, we can't yell, we can't yell, we can't yell. <laughs> and everyone around us obviously got very irritated with us and very uncomfortable. But... Basically, when it comes, this is a practical example. When you're watching something you shouldn't be watching, mm. you have got to remove yourself from it. Yes. Mm. You know, 2 Timothy 2.22 doesn't say walk gently away no, from the lust. Flee. What does it say? Get out of there. It says get out. Mm. <laughs> so if you are in a situation where you are watching something, hearing something which is going to destroy your mind, get out. Mm. Flee. Don't just gently walk away with one eye half still staring. <laughs> because as soon as it is in your mind, the devil goes wild. Mm -hmm. One thought, one image in your mind. And lady, let's be real here, Jen. That is how pornography takes grips of people, and not just men, of women. Yeah. That is how it gets in. Yeah. One image gets into your mind and festers and festers and grows and grows. So before you get to that point, ladies, you've got to flee flee before it even gets there yeah yeah absolutely come on let's talk and about they, strongholds and the, yeah with the pulling down of strongholds yeah. so uh, people will see that and then like for the children with for instance we also teach them switch off the tv immediately but when you see that you need to pull down those strongholds because otherwise it's going to if you you see it and now you switch it off because it's a second it takes a second for an image to be engrafted into your mind um, and then we tell them, now you need to pull it down. So you need to ask God to wash your mind. And how do you wash it? With the word of God. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world this age, fashioned after, adapted to its external superficial customs. So the things of this world is superficial. Mm -hmm. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you might prove for what is acceptable to God. So when those images come in and you switch it off, because if you don't switch it off, some people say, I just look away, but your ears still hear. Yeah. So the, and by hearing, you still form images in your, in your yeah. mind. Yeah. So those images are still forming strongholds in your mind. If you keep on pondering on that, it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Once again, what you feed on will grow. Absolutely. So if you then go and you feed on the Word and say, Lord, I've seen this. It wasn't on purpose. Please help me wash my mind clean with your word um, and help me to get rid of this image. Good. Okay. So we're still on the danger of these strongholds. Yes. Titi. Yeah. Um, there are certain things uh, that we need to look at as parents. I remember my baby, the last one, Maranatha. Uh, those days when we travel out, we will buy our baby dolls. And any time I travel, mommy get me baby dolls. I didn't know, even though I would buy her buy, uh, Bibles, but then I would get baby dolls for her. And I didn't know I was planting something inside of her. I was creating an image of, you know, beauty is if you look like ba a baby doll. Right. So I didn't know that. And then I didn't know something was growing inside of her. Then she got into the uh, high school. And then all of a sudden, we noticed that Maranatha was losing weight. As a parent, we were concerned. What was going on? This girl became skinny. Then we checked our uh, 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 closet. We found out that all the food we were giving her, oh, she was wow. keeping it in the closet. Whoa, wow. She would take food, and then she wrote something down. You are too fat. Oh, wow. You are too fat. Um, you've got to be skinny. 
So she will keep her, if you give her eggs, she will keep the eggs somewhere. She was wow. keeping the food away because she's got to look like a baby doll. Wow. I didn't know as a parent, we were planting something inside of her, just the image of Barbie. I don't know if you all know Barbie doll. I don't know if they still Barbie do. Barbie dolls. It's yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So, and then uh, it became serious, so we had to put her under the word. Even though she was, she became anorexic completely. She was losing weight and uh, there was nothing we could do. We even get to us to beating her. Then she would say to us, even if you beat me, I will not drink water. She wrote yes. something down. Yeah. No, don't drink water. You know, Whoa. our mind was just messed up because of that. Sure. So we had to stay in the world with her and uh, just allow the scripture. We will play, even though she was not listening. But then we will play the word in the house and finally the mind started getting back and today that's how she was released oh. through the word of god you know i once we were working with a little girl and her house burned down and the parents suddenly realized that things are changing mm -hmm. and you know she herself internalized she thought to herself but i could have prevented this yeah. and this whole guilt came upon her and i think there's so many women that you you are only a mere spectator of a situation but your mind mm. brings certain pattern thoughts mm. certain ways of reacting towards what you're seeing you don't even have to be involved mm. this little girl wasn't she wasn't the one who started the fire she's a, she wasn't the one who instigated it but yet it took so long to take her through this process mm. of renewing her mind mm -hmm. and sometimes we forget that the brain has a pathway exactly this is and, good and it's good th that you know we sometimes think but why don't you change mm. You, you have been reading the word, but what we must understand, the brain is alive, it's an organ, and that's why it says uh, the word is a sword that cuts through yep. bone and marrow and yep. thoughts, that the word is doing that operation, but that pathway of the brain needs to be changed. And I think sometimes people get discouraged and say, but I've been praying for my child. Why is she not changing? Mm. And you know, that's when we have to have that patience yes. to realize the brain has a pathway that needs to be changed. And yes, it's the word mm. that Very brings good. the change. So yes. we know um, about stronghold is, it's almost like uh, a jargon that we use in Christianese. Right. But if you go back to it, and I know we're going to carry on with this in, in our next programs, a stronghold is any thought that you have, well, you can't allow thoughts. Thoughts come in, whether you like it or not. The devil will put those thoughts in you. It's like a bird will fly over your head. You can't stop it from pooing on you. That's right. Okay, if it's going to poo on you, it's going to poo on you, but you can do something with that poo. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? Thoughts are, you're going to be bombarded with thoughts all the time. You can't ever stop that. But what you do with those thoughts, and any thought that is, comes into your mind that you agree on, when you agree on that thought, it becomes a stronghold. And in the days of strongholds, in our fortresses, a stronghold is a big barricade. It sets up a set thing or thought process in your mind. Whether it's negative or positive, you can have a stronghold depending on what you have chosen to agree on. And whatever you choose to agree on, the word says, How, whatsoever a man thinketh, so he is. So our thoughts are going to influence the way we see ourselves. They're going to influence the way we speak. They're going to influence the way we act. And while we expose ourselves, as we've just discussed, when we expose ourselves to things that are contrary to the word of God, contrary to his truth, contrary to life, we are in fact allowing or exposing our minds through our senses to come in line with those thoughts. In a way, don't think that it's not going to harm you. If you open the door and you begin to think on that thing, you begin to agree with it. And once you've agreed with that thought, just like with Maranatha, when she saw that doll, and or it wouldn't have just been that. I mean, it could be anything. When you look at magazines, when you see things on, on the media, you see what, how you're supposed to look. But little do we know, all those 
man, that's just a fallacy for goodness <laughs> sake. The amount of photoshopping <laughs> that gets done. I mean, really, please. It's, it's just a, it's a fantasy. It's not even true. But she believed that. She agreed with that image. Yes. And because of that, it became a stronghold. Yes. So even if she looked in the mirror, it doesn't matter what the reality. Her reality is what she had agreed upon. Yes. And let me tell you, the enemy is going to deceive you and deceive your children. And what you agree upon is going to become your reality. Mm. And whatever is your reality is what you're going to be living in. So we have concluded our first part wow. of the helmet sure. of salvation. So much more to get into. And I'm so excited about that. But we had to lay a foundation for you to understand the strategy of the enemy concerning you. That was really important. And I know that this has been a blessing to you. We're going to carry on with this theme to build into exactly how the Word of God can change everything about you. I know that our studio audience, I can see them on the edge of their seats. They are so eager to get those questions out. So let's give our studio audience an opportunity to ask questions concerning the helmet of salvation. What a powerful time we've had in the Word of God concerning the helmet of salvation. I'm sure that there are those of you at home who have questions concerning not just this piece of armor, but all the pieces of armor that we've discussed together in the programs. In fact, I want to take this opportunity now to thank you, all of you that have sent emails, your questions concerning the things we've been discussing. What a privilege it has been to receive such amazing feedback, one after the other we've been able to answer your questions and so we want to encourage you to keep doing that email us at higher life at myfaithtv.com so we can get right back to you concerning God's word on the questions you have about the armor but right now here we are in the studio and we have an enthusiastic studio audience who have so many questions concerning this piece of armor the salvation our helmet of salvation. Ladies, who has a question for me today? Ah, in the front row, please stand. I want to know how do you get the wrong interpretation in your mind out and replace it with the right interpretation? That is an excellent question. Whoa, panel, are you ready for this? Ankya, I'm going to ask you to answer. How do we get rid of wrong mindsets? I think none of us can say that when the day we come to Christ, we have the perfect mindset. And that's why he said in Romans 12 verse 2, we have to renew our mind to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed. But how, like you say, it says in John 15 that God prunes us. Mm -hmm. And you know, many people think but that is through difficult circumstances, but God says he prunes us and he cleanses us through his word. So how do you do it? By not thinking the same way you did. But start thinking according to what God says. And maybe in the beginning, you might not believe it. When you have a headache, you might say, but I'm still going to get migraines. But continuously, as you say, I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. No longer. I have the mind of Christ. I'm not going to get these headaches any longer. That word, the word of God will cut away that branch in your life and it will not continue to bear fruit. And the fruit that will bear fruit, according to the word, is the seed of the word. And it will bear fruit 30, 60 and 100 fold. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Ankya. That was such a good answer. What an appropriate answer to remember. Don't keep speaking in line with the negativity and the wrong mindset. Once you've identified what it is, let the Word of God prune that right out of you. Start speaking what God says about you and the seed of the Word that's planted inside of you is going to produce exactly what it says. A new mindset, a new way of thinking. Thank you for that, Ankya. Now, now we do have time for one more question here. So studio audience, who has a question for us today? Ah, right in the front row. Please won't you stand. What is your question concerning the mindsets, the helmet of salvation? I want to know um, what effect do the cartoons have on our children? Excellent question. What effect do the cartoons, the things that our children are exposed to on television, what effect do they have on our children? Linda, I'm going to ask you to answer that. 
it's actually very dangerous in a sense, and we as parents need to protect our children. A child from the, uh, uh, from the age of birth to six years old cannot discern between fantasy and reality. Mm -hmm. So whatever they see on TV, they see it as a reality. So you see, you'll see a little boy running around with a Spider-Man or Superman thing around his neck. Um, and you've even heard of children jumping off roofs, thinking that they are that superhero. Now the danger in that is that they will grow up with those images. And later when they are older, we want them to serve Christ, to see him as their superhero. But we've imprinted through the TV all these images in their minds, which they felt at that stage is real because they can't discern between the two. So we as parents really need to protect our children in what they see, what they watch. That's why God gave them to us up until a certain point. So we need to protect them on what they take in. So rather give them movies like uh, Noah... Um, especially when they're younger, the word, things that are based on the word. You get beautiful children's movies that they can watch um, as young children. That's excellent. Thank you. Thanks for that. Now, those of you who are at home and have any other questions that you want to be answered concerning the armor of God and the helmet of salvation, again, we want to encourage you. Email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we will get back to you concerning those questions. Keep those questions coming. We want to be able to give you the truth and the wisdom of God concerning them. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of the first part of our helmet of salvation. What a very, very important part of our armor that is. I would like for you to help me thank our panel who has been absolutely brilliant. What a blessing it is to have women of wisdom who are rooted in the Word of God and our studio audience. Oh. What a joy it is to have you here. We are so excited about your enthusiasm, the way you've really spurred us and on to bring the truth of God's word. And those of you who are watching from home, you bless us. Thank you for being a part of this amazing time we've had together in the word. And now I want you to understand that coming up is the next part of the series that you do not want to miss. So make sure you look out for it. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. When Jesus was Good. in the desert fasting, he was in prayer, filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. And why did the enemy attack? He came and said, if you are the Son of God. Whoa. And that's what he comes with. He didn't st change his strategy because all I need to know is in here. If He's I need defeated. to know anything about sight, then it will be in here. Yes. So if you just dig into the word, this is supernatural. Everything in here will happen in your life. In the churches, what's been preached from the pulpit is that from the Word? You sit in there and receiving and thinking, it's the man of God. And whatever he says is, but what, what, aren't we testing it against the Word? Mm -hmm.